The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y... Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Well, a baby in the house can certainly change a person's life. Take the great Gildersleeve, for instance. Usually, at 8 o'clock in the morning, he's fast asleep. But now, things are different. At 8 o'clock, he's up, dressed, and cheerfully bathing the baby. Ah, uh, this is fun, isn't it, baby? Sure. I'm going to get you all nice and clean, then you'll have your breakfast. Let's wash your little toesies. Oop, you're splashing me, baby. Well, you splash me, I'll splash you. There. <laughs> all right, now, give me your foot now. We'll wash your little toes one at a time. This little piggy went to market... Uh, tickles. Uh, and this little piggy stayed home. Miss Gilsey. Come in, Bertie. Miss Gilsey, baby. <laughs> What's the matter? Looks like you got more water on you than the baby has. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess so. This letter just came for you. Letter? I'll read it later, Bertie. Might be something important. It came special delivery. Oh, it did? Let me see the envelope. Uh, County Welfare Department. Uh, here, hold the soap, Bertie. Yes, sir. Wonder what they want. Uh, dear Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, 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 concerning the baby that you found in your car several weeks ago, since the parents have not been located, we feel it's time to discuss the future plans for this child. Our welfare investigator, Miss Phoebe Crabtree, will call on you at your home Saturday evening. Please be there. Yours truly, Mr. Uh, uh, somebody, County Welfare Department. Investigator, what's she coming around here for? I don't know, Miss Gilsey. Maybe they want to take the baby away. What? That's it, Bertie. I suppose I'm not raising her right. Mr. Gilsey, you're doing a fine job with the baby. That doesn't make any difference. This investigator will come spying around and find something wrong. Well, they can't do this to me, Bertie. No, sir, don't you let them. I'm going to fight this thing. I'm right with you. They can't shove me around. No, sir, you're too big. You... <laughs> I'll never give up. That's right, Mr. Gilsey. Don't give up the ship. Don't worry, Bertie. I've just begun to fight. Well, what about it, Judge? What am I going to do? Now, oh, now, Gildy, if you'll just calm down a minute. How can I calm down when this woman's coming tomorrow to take the baby away? Now, this letter doesn't say anything of the kind. It merely states that this Phoebe Crabtree is coming down. I know what's in the letter, Hooker. I can read. Now, now, Gildy, don't get yourself in a tizzy. The whole thing is merely routine. The welfare department always checks up in cases like this. Well, I don't want anybody named Phoebe Crabtree snooping around my house. Gildy, they have no reason to take the baby away. After all, you're not a bank robber. Well... You're not a second-story man. No. And there's no law against being a fathead. (laughs) Now, see here, Hooker. This investigator will merely interview you and then ask for a few references. Oh. I'd suggest that you ask a few of our leading citizens to vouch for you. How about the mayor? The mayor? Well, I don't know. What's the matter? In trouble with him again? Well, he was sort of unreasonable about my last water report. Just because it was a little late, three months. Uh huh. Well, let's see. It ought to be someone who is a prominent member of the community. I know. Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, that old busybody? Well, I know you two don't get along very well, but she has a lot of influence in this town. But she's so stuck up, Judge. 
I can just hear her. Ooh, how do you do, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, it's up to you, Gilday. You said you were worried about keeping the baby. Yeah, guess you're right, Horace. I'll have to go see her. And, Gildy, if I were you, I'd make an effort to be nice to her. It'll be an effort, all right. But I'll do it for the baby. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> Uh, just happened to be going by, thought I'd drop in and say hello. Oh, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> Is there something you wanted, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, wanted? Oh, no. Just happened to be going by, thought I'd say hello. Yes. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm very busy this morning. Of course. Suppose you are pretty busy with all your activities. I was just saying to Judge Hooker, I don't know what Summerfield would do without Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, you were. Yeah. Why, you're one of the town's leading lights. Yes. Nice of you to say so. Well, you are. You're president of the Women's Club, the Book Lovers, the Summerfield Shakespeare Society. Why, you've got your nose. I mean, you're in everything. <laughs> I don't see how you do so many things and stay so attractive, too. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you come in, Mr. Gildersleeve? Ray, I made it. <laughs> Please sit down. Oh, thank you. Mr. Gildersleeve, I was a little surprised when you mentioned our Summerfield Shakespeare Society. I didn't know you were a follower of the Bard. Who? The Bard. That's what we call Shakespeare. Oh, well, I never knew him that well. <laughs> <laughs> but you do like his play. Oh, yes, I wouldn't miss one. Oh, well, in that case, you'll want to see our thrilling production of Macbeth next week. Well... Uh... I am playing Lady Macbeth. Is this a dagger that I see before me? Huh? Where? <laughs> That's a line from the play, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, of course. Here are four tickets for you and your family. You can send me a check for $12. <laughs> $12. Well, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Pettibone. Yes? I wonder if I could ask you a teeny-weeny little favor. Why, of course. You see, an investigator from the welfare department is coming to see me tomorrow about my keeping the baby. Oh, yes. Now, if you could just put in a good word for me, it would mean a lot. Well, I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. What? I would have one or two little reservations about recommending you. Oh, you would? Yes. There are a few of your habits I do not approve of. Uh -huh. Smoking cigars, carousing with those jolly boys, not to mention your little peccadilloes with the fair sex. Uh, oh. Those are all little black marks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I'd be glad to give up cigars and the Jolly Boys, not to mention the little peccadillos. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, it's easier said than done. But, Mrs. Pettibone... I'll have to think it over, and I'll let you know tomorrow. But... Au revoir now, I must rehearse. But... Is this a dagger that I see before me? No, that's me, and I'm leaving. Good day, Mrs. <laughs> see anything so strange about that, Marjorie? Perfectly natural for a man to sit in his own living room after dinner and read? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing so funny about it. I don't have to be out carousing with the Jolly Boys every night, singing, having a good time. Of course not, Hunky. You just go right ahead and read if you want to. Want me to get you a cigar? Uh, a cigar? <clears throat> No, oh, thank you, my dear. I've given up cigars. Uncle Mort, don't you think you're overdoing this being respectable? Well, just because Mrs. Pettibone... Marjorie, said... I know what I'm doing. Well, all right, Unky. But I think all this pretending is silly. You're a pretty nice old uncle just the way you are. Well, thank you, my dear. But we mustn't give him any reason to take the baby away. Let's all be on our good behavior. <laughs> Leroy, do you always... Hi. What? Where are you going? No, you're not. You're going to practice staying home for a change. Oh, on. Playing out in the street like some ragamuffin? Suppose Mrs. Pettibone should see you. Mrs. Pettibone? What's she got? Now, don't argue. You're staying in. What's the matter with him? I'll tell you later. And quit whispering. We're going to start behaving like a normal, civilized family. 
Won't hurt us to spend an evening home together? Uncle Mort. Yes? I thought you had a date with Miss Fairchild tonight. Adeline? Well, I did, but I'm calling it off. Oh. There's no reason why I have to be going out on dates all the time. After all, women aren't the most important thing in my life. Ah! Leroy! <laughs> Shouldn't you call Miss Fairchild and tell her you're not coming? Yes, I intend to. Well, you ought to do it now. It's 8 o'clock. All right, I will. I'm not afraid to call Adeline. I'll do it right now. Hope Adeline won't mind my breaking our date. Oh, well. She'll understand. I think. I'll be polite, but firm. Have to let her know that I mean business. Hello? Hello? Miss Fairchild? What? Who's there? This is Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Throckmorton, you silly Billy. You play so cute. I'm not playing. <laughs> you are, too, you great big honey bear, you. Adeline? I mean, Miss Fairchild, I... I'm waiting for you, Throckmorton. Well, I... It's mighty cozy over here. There's a fire in the fireplace. There is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the lights are turned down low. They are? And I'm just dripping with perfume. You am? I mean, you are? <laughs> you hurry now, you hear? Well, no. What? I've got to be strong. I mean, I'm going to stay home and read a book. Read a book? Well, I declare. Well, very well, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. If that's the way you feel, you can just stay home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, well, the baby loves me. high with work. Uh, guess I could answer a couple of letters. Bessie! Bessie! <laughs> oh, that girl. I suppose she's down getting another soda. <sighs> guess Adeline will never speak to me again after last night. I hope Mrs. Pettibone is satisfied. I've given up everything. That old cigar in the ashtray sure looks tempting. Maybe if I just... No. Be strong, Gildersleeve. The cigar sure is. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Throckmorton. Oh, Adeline. Hello. How do you feel? Uh, all right. I'm sorry I was so mean to you last night. What? You poor, misunderstood man, you. But, Adeline, aren't you... A... Angry at my itsy-bitsy boy? Why, no, Throckmorton. Marjorie told me all about your noble sacrifice. Oh, well, she did? And I think you're just wonderful doing all this for that little baby. It's the finest thing I ever heard of. Well, I'm just doing my duty, that's all. Well, I think it's mighty honorable. And I want you to know, Throckmorton, that little Adeline is right with you. If you can make a sacrifice, so can I. What do you mean? Throckmorton, this is goodbye. Goodbye? Huh? I mustn't stand between you and that little baby. I don't think I should ever see you again. No, Adeline, we don't have to overdo this. Farewell, Throckmorton. Adeline! Now, don't take it too hard. Let's have no tears, no regrets. When I leave, just imagine I'm going into the next room there. But that's the broom closet. <laughs> well, we're just two little bees that met in the magnolia blossom. We sipped our honey and then flew away. Buzz, buzz, buzz. <laughs> Throckmorton? Yes? Before I fly away, would you do me a teeny-weeny favor? Why, of course. Would you kiss your little honeybee goodbye? Well, there's no harm in one little kiss, since we're saying goodbye. I'm puckered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Pettibone. Hello. <laughs> this is Miss Honeybee. I mean, Miss Fairchild. How do you do? <laughs> Hi, 
how's Lady Macbeth today? Mr. Gildersleeve, I came here to tell you that you could count on an excellent character reference from me. Oh, thank you. But after what I just witnessed, I find I must reverse my decision. But Mrs. Pettibone... But Brockmorton and I were just saying goodbye forever. <laughs> A likely story. And what's that in the ashtray? A cigar! That's from yesterday. I'll have a few things to say to that welfare investigator. Good day. I'm sorry, Throckmorton. That's all right. <laughs> Here are real prizes for you. Twenty brand-new 1949 Ford sedans will be won in Parquet's series of baby-naming contests. Yes, four big, beautiful Ford sedans will be awarded every week for five separate weeks. And the winner of the grand prize gets a $1,000 bonus to go with the Ford he wins. And there are more and more prizes. Each week for five weeks, Parquet Margarine will award 40 General Electric Table Radios, 20 Corey Coffee Makers, 20 Toastmaster Automatic Pop-Up Toasters, Sixty new $10 bills. Now, as you know, Gildersleeve is trying to find a name for the cuddly baby girl he found a few weeks ago. So, to enter this contest, just send us a name for the baby. Write it on an entry blank. They're available at your food dealers with complete contest rules. Or use a plain piece of paper. Send entry with one red flap from end of a package of parquet margarine and your name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to enclose name and address of your Parquet dealer. Make a bid for your new beautiful 1949 Ford tonight. Mail your entry to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. This week's contest closes October 16th. Well, the great Gildersleeve is a very worried man. With the influential Mrs. Pettibone against him, he feels his chances of keeping the baby are very slim. It's afternoon now, and we find our water commissioner, crushed in spirit, plodding homeward from the office. He's just passing Floyd's barber shop. Hey, come in. Uh, oh, Floyd, I don't feel like talking to him. Don't run away. want to ask you something. Well, what is it, Floyd? What's this I hear about you and Miss Fairchild schmoozing around in your office? What? That's nice work if you can get it, Commish. <laughs> now, Floyd, that was all perfectly innocent. Uh-huh. I suppose you was just collecting her water bill. If... Who told you about this? Well, it ain't exactly a secret, Commish. Mrs. Pettibone's spreading it all over town. Oh? This isn't funny, Floyd. It may interest you to know that I might lose the baby on account of this. No kidding? I was counting on Mrs. Pettibone for a character reference when that investigator comes tonight. What a reference I'm going to get. Gee, I'm sorry. If there's anything I can do, Commish... Well... If you need a reference or anything, you can always count on little Floydie Munson. It, well, thanks, Floyd, but I'm afraid a recommendation from Munson's barbershop wouldn't be much help. Why not? Well, Mrs. Pettibone is an important civic leader, and, well... Oh, I'm not good enough for you, huh? No, Floyd, I didn't for mean For your that. information, Commissioner, Barbara is an honorable profession. Of course it is. I didn't I mean... don't know why you should talk. They had barbers before they had water commissioners. No, no Floyd... Started way back with the Romans... Why, them Roman togas is nothing but barber sheets. Floyd, if you'll just listen a minute. I'm proud to be a barber. It's honest toil. And at least I don't spend my time chasing dames around a desk. Oh! Now look here. Good day, Casanova. Floyd! Oh, what's the use? What a life. Guess I'll drop into Peavy's and get a cigar. Mrs. Pettibone's got her mind all made up about me anyway. Nobody could... Say, Peavy knows her pretty well. I wonder if he'd put in a good word for me. Maybe if I flatter him a little. Oh, good afternoon, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do? Peavy, you're a wonderful fellow. How's that? I said you're a wonderful fellow. That's what I thought you said. Yes, sir, you're a splendid pharmacist, a stalwart friend, and a model husband. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. 
Well, you are, Peavy. Well, I don't know. I've been pretty mean to Mrs. Peavy at times. Why, I can't believe that. Well, it's true. Just the other morning, I cooked her breakfast, washed the dishes, swept the floor, but I refused to burn the papers. You did? Yes, I was in a rebellious mood. I, I don't know what comes over me sometimes. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm just a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> well, Peavy, as far as I'm concerned, you have a sterling character. And I'd give you my recommendation any time. Yeah, thank you. To anybody. Mm, thanks again. And I'm sure you'd do the same for me. <laughs> well, wouldn't you? Oh, I don't know. Huh? Peavy, I just said some nice things about you. I didn't ask you to. Well, I did. <laughs> Can't you say something nice about me? Mm, not today, I can. not uh, why not? Well, I don't approve of kissing during office hours. Peavy, don't you listen to Mrs. Pettibone. It was all a mistake. It certainly was. Peavy, Adeline and I were just saying goodbye. Mr. Gildersleeve, you can tell that to Sweeney. Oh. <laughs> I think it's a shame. And you were trying so hard, too. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now, my dear. It's water over the dam. I'm going to miss that baby so much. Yeah, me too. <sighs> Children, this is an unhappy day for all of us. Miss Crabtree will be here in a few hours. The way things have turned out, I guess she'll take our little baby away. Well, we've got to be brave. It's just one of life's little tragedies. We've got to keep our chins up, heads high. Sure, Unky. Sure, Unc. We'll take it like little soldiers. Just be cheerful about it. Well, here's the baby, Mr. Gilsleeve. Thank you, Bertie. I got her all bundled up in the carriage like you told me. Where are you taking her, Unky? For a walk in the park. It'll be our last little visit together. It's mean of that investigator to take her away. I'm sure going to miss that little child. Yes. Bertie, we've decided to be cheerful about this. Yes, I'll be cheerful. That's the spirit. It's going to be mighty lonesome not seeing that little face in the morning. Now, Bertie? But I'll be cheerful. Good. <laughs> I'm going to feel awful when I look in her crib and there's nobody there. Empty. Bertie, please. But I'll be cheerful. You're fine. <laughs> House is sure going to be quiet and gloomy without that little baby's laughter. Bertie. But don't you worry about me. I'll be cheerful. <laughs> Come on, baby. Get it, Leroy. Oh, hello. Yes, ma'am? Does Mr. Gildersleeve live here? Yes, he does, but he ain't home right now. Oh, well, I'm the investigator from the welfare department, Miss Crabtree. Investigator? Oh. I was supposed to call this evening, but I got away a little earlier than I expected. Yes, ma'am. Is the baby here? No, ma'am. Was she with Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, ma'am. Well, it's very important that I see them. Could you tell me where they are? Mr. Gillsleeve's in the park. Oh, well, I suppose I can find him. Well, when you see a sad, fat man wheeling a baby carriage, that's him. You like it here in the park, baby? Yeah, well, that's good. It is beautiful. Leaves all turning red and gold. Good. Hear those birds? They'll be flying south pretty soon. <sighs> well, I've been walking quite a while now. I think I'll sit down on this bench for a minute. <sighs> well, baby, guess this is the last time we'll sit in the park together. Yeah. Well, I hope wherever they take you, you'll be happy. Maybe they'll find your mother soon. You gonna miss me a little, baby? <laughs> well, I'm certainly gonna miss you. <sighs> hello. Huh? Oh, hello. Oh, my, that's a cute baby. Yes, he is. Hello there. Kitchy, kitchy, coo. 
I love babies, don't you? Yes. Mind if I sit down? Oh, no, no, not at all. Thank you. Huh? You getting cold, baby? Here, let me tuck your little blanket in. Uh, there. You kind of like that baby, don't you? Yeah, but I wish I didn't. What? I won't have her after tonight. See, she isn't really my baby. I'm just taking care of her. But the welfare department's going to take her away from me. They are? Yeah. They're sending some investigator down to snoop around. <laughs> Miss Phoebe Crabtree. Probably some old sourpuss. <laughs> Oh, do you think so? Sure. I can just see her. Skinny old hatchet face. <laughs> I see. She probably hates children, too. Well, she might be nice. With a name like Crabtree? Uh, don't be ridiculous, miss. Uh, uh, Crabtree. Yeah, but... <laughs> Crabtree? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm... <laughs> I'm that skinny old hatchet, hatchet face that hates children. <laughs> I heard a few things about you this afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve. I had a long-distance call from a Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, yeah. I guess you're going to take the baby away then. Oh, no. In fact, I came here to ask if you'd mind keeping the baby a little longer. You did? Well, uh, what about Mrs. Pettibone? Oh, we didn't take her charges very seriously. The welfare department doesn't take much stock in rumors. Of course not. Fine organization, the welfare department. <laughs> We've checked you very thoroughly. And besides... Anyone seeing you and that baby together would know you've done a wonderful job. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. And goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Crabtree. <laughs> wonderful name. <laughs> Come on, baby. We're going home. <laughs> Excuse me while I light a cigar. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Remember, just choosing a name for the Gildersleeve baby girl may bring you one of the following big prizes. 20 powerful, streamlined 1949 Ford sedans, 200 beautiful General Electric radios, 100 Cory coffee makers, 100 Toastmaster automatic toasters, and cash prizes galore. 721 prizes in all in these parquet contests, plus a $1,000 bonus to the grand prize winner. Just write your choice of a name on an entry blank obtainable at your dealers. Then send your entry with one red end flap from a package of Parquet Margarine and with your name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. You want a big new Ford sedan? Send your entry now. Adeline. Throckmorton, I'm awfully glad everything worked out so nice about the baby. Well, thank you. And Throckmorton, it's mighty cozy over here. Huh? There's a fire in the fireplace. The lights are turned down low. They are? Uh-huh. And your little honeybee is waiting. Well, I'll buzz right over. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Lady, your food store has a big bargain waiting for you, a bargain in nutrition. It's cheese. Cheese prices have come down, and cheese is a protein food. Actually, ounce for ounce, no other basic food matches cheese for high-quality, complete protein for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. For the tastiest cheese main dishes, use one of Kraft's pasteurized process varieties. Medium Mellow Kraft American Sharp Old English, or for rich yet mild cheddar flavor, use the famous cheese food Velveeta. Be a wise homemaker. Cook with cheese often. It's a bargain in nutrition. This is NBC. <laughs>